Hey guys, it's Lexi, and in this video on molecular representations, we'll be looking at how to draw a staggered Newman projection. In order to understand Newman projections, you first have to understand the difference between staggered and eclipsed conformations. So when we're looking at a staggered conformation, if you look at the backbone here, you'll see that the backbone is staggered, meaning that you have one group going up in the plane and then the other group going down in the plane, notably the group A and group F. If we look at the eclipse conformation, both of the groups in the plane are gonna be pointing in the same direction. So when we trace the backbone here, we see that we have the A group down as well as the F group pointing down. So that would represent the eclipse conformation. So let's start by drawing the Newman projection for the staggered conformation. In order to draw a Newman projection, you're looking down two carbons. So we're going to be looking down a carbon-carbon bond. So I'm going to have my front carbon be this carbon right here, and then my back carbon is going to be this carbon right here. That would mean that my eyeball is from this side looking right. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my Cyclops man. He's standing here here and he's looking down this carbon-carbon bond. So you want to remember that if something is in the plane, meaning it's a straight line, that is going to be in the plane of your computer screen. If something is on a wedge, it's coming out of the screen toward you. If it's on a dash, it's behind the computer screen going away from you. So Cyclops Man is stuck inside of your computer screen and he's looking down this carbon-carbon bond. So, Cyclops Man is looking down this green bond right here, and what he sees is this carbon right in front of him, marked as a dot. And then what he sees directly behind that carbon is the back carbon, which is represented by a big circle. And so let's start by looking at what's attached to the front carbon. So remember, Cyclops Man is stuck inside of the screen. So for him, what he sees straight up is letter A, because letter A is up and in the plane, in the same plane of your computer screen that Cyclops Man is in. So from his perspective, he has to look up to see the letter A. Then remember, wedges are coming out of the screen toward us, toward me and you. And so from Cyclops Man's perspective, in order to look at the letter C, he is going to look down and to his right. So the letter C would be down and to the right. In order in order for him to look at letter B, which remember is on a dash, meaning it's going behind the screen, away from me and you. So from his perspective, if he wanted to reach over and grab letter B, he would have to reach down and to his left behind the computer screen. So letter B over here is going to be down and to the left from his perspective. Now let's look at the back carbon. On the back carbon, we have letter F pointing straight down. The reason letter F is straight down is because it's in the same plane as Cyclops Man. It's just in the plane of the computer screen. And if we look at letter D, letter D is on a wedge, meaning it's in front of the screen. So if Cyclops Man is facing to the right and he wants to grab letter D, he's going to reach up and to his right in order to grab that letter. So it's going to be up to the right. Meanwhile, letter E is behind the computer screen. So so if he wants to reach letter E, it's going up and to his left from his perspective. So this is how you would draw the Newman projection for this staggered conformation. With all of that said, I know that for some of you guys, it's going to be difficult to visualize that the wedges are in front of the screen and the dashes are behind the screen. So another way that you can think about this, if you're having a hard time visualizing, is to remember when Cyclops Man is looking to the right, such as in this example, the wedges are going to be in whatever direction he's looking. So if he's looking to the right, the wedge is going to be on the right, and then any dashes are going to be on the left. Likewise, if Cyclops Man is looking left, then the wedges are going to follow whatever direction he's facing. So the wedges, therefore, would be going left, and then dashes would be going right. So let's see how that would apply in this example. So Cyclops Man right now is facing to the right. So we would be looking at this scenario. So letter C is down on a wedge. So we would expect it to be down to the right, and it is. 
And then if we look at letter D, it is up on a wedge. So we would expect it to be up and to the right, and it is. And that would cover the wedges. Now let's look at the dashes. The dashes we expect to be on the left side. So if we look at letter B, it is down on a dash. So we would expect it to be down to the left, and it is. And then if we look at letter E, it is up on a dash. So we expect it to be up to the left, and it is. So that's another way that you can go about doing this if you have a hard time visualizing. With that said, I would try to be able to visualize it because it can help you in the course in general in trying to understand stereochemistry and other topics. Let's go ahead and try to draw the Newman projection for this molecule. Go ahead and pause the video and then you can check your work. So the first thing that I've done is highlighted the backbone or the plane of the molecule to confirm that I'm looking at a staggered conformation. And then I've marked my front carbon with a dot and then my back carbon with a big circle. Remember the front carbon is closer to Cyclops man and the back carbon is further away from him. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my front carbon as a dot and I'm going to look at what groups are attached. There's a hydrogen pointing straight down. There's a methyl on a dash, which from Cyclops Man's perspective, in order to get that methyl, he'd be reaching up and to the right. And then the iodine is on a wedge coming out of the screen. From Cyclops Man's perspective, it would be up and to his left. Now we can do the back carbon. When we're looking at the back carbon, we've got a chlorine straight up in the air on the back carbon. And then we also have a bromine on a wedge going down. And so from Cyclops Man's perspective, he'd be reaching down and to the left in order to touch that bromine. And then the hydrogen is going down on a dash. So from Cyclops Man's perspective, that would be down and to the right. Again, if you're struggling to visualize this, we can use the little shortcut where you remember if Cyclops Man is looking left, then wedges are going to be to the left and dashes are going to be to the right. So in this case, Cyclops Man is indeed looking left, so we're matching this case up, and then we'd expect everything that's on a wedge to be on the left side of the molecule, and it is, and then everything on a dash we would expect to be on the right side of the molecule, and that's exactly what we're seeing. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and also hit the notification bell so that you can stay up to date when I upload new videos.